why you're up here with everybody to talk about the movie. Sure. <laughs> so, so my area of expertise, as was said, is physics education research. So what I look at, and generally, in a nutshell, physics education research is the way you look, is basically looking at teaching and learning of physics. So how people actually learn physics and how you can actually, as, a, as an instructor, um, have pedagogical improvements on how you present the material. Now you might think, so that's what it is in a nutshell. Now, the different topics within physics education research have to do with the kinds of issues that students can have problems with. For example, and one starting point, that's the starting point that sort of was the first topic, was in terms of understanding concepts, conceptual understanding of physics. Um, first quick poll, what's the first thing you think of when you think of a physics class? Somebody. Hard. <laughs> that's hard and math. That's basically what it is right there, yes. So that's the thing too. Physics is hard and physics has a lot of math and that's and the two are often closely related. Um, so the thing is when you look at when you start doing introductory physics, you have to look at first of all where they need to be at the end of the course and also where they're starting at the beginning beginning of the course. A lot of under conceptual misunderstandings they can bring into the course from their prior experience, whether it be in the classroom or just everyday life up to the point where they entered your classroom. And um, so sometimes you have to teach them new ideas they never heard of before, but sometimes you have to get them to unlearn some misconceptions as well. And that's sort of where the whole thing starts. Now, I focus on problem solving because problem solving, in addition to being one of the, more, one of the most widespread topics in physics education research, excuse me, <clears throat> it's also one of the most widely demanded skills in the workforce, be it private sector or public sector. Um, in the movie, uh, you have Mark Watney, who is a botanist, and um, how spoilerific should I be? Should I watch Can you spoil the movie? Is there anyone here who needs to... Okay, we're going to spoil it. Spoil? Okay. okay. All right. So that means I can cut right to the end. The last thing he says, the last thing he says is he's prepping the astronomers, not the astronomers, astronauts, excuse me, wow, sorry, um, that they hit a point where they think they're going to die. And the reason they, he says that is because as much as you're prepped as an astronaut, you're going to go up into space and you're on your own. You can talk to Houston, they can help you somewhat, but as you saw in the movie, there's a point where Houston could not help them anymore. So he said, the advice you have is don't panic. What you do is you get to work. You start solving problems. What are problems do you have? You solve them one at a time. Don't try to do them all at once. And if you solve enough problems, you get to go back home. And that's, that was the last line I'm paraphrasing. Um, so it really got to shine, that particular point about problem solving in the movie. Um, but in more, less stressful circumstances, it's very <laughs> vital to be able to do that in the private sector. If, say, you're, trying, you're on a team and you have to cooperate with each other, that's another skill you have to do. But you have to think about the kinds of problems you run into when you're trying to design new products for the workplace. If you are in the public sector, let's say you work for the military and the government, something like that, um, it can be a little bit more stressful. Like you might be the Houston engineer who has to come up with the answer in a hurry, or you lose your astronauts. And that did happen several times. Apollo 13 is one of the most famous examples. So um, that was another movie. <laughs> um, they make for great movies. Yes, they do. <laughs> but um, once you notice in the movie with uh, Mr. Watney, and this, um, get, again, um, I, my field draws from cognitive psychology, because a lot of it, too, is you have to get into how people learn, and how people study, and how people solve problems. Um, and. Um, I'll let the psychologist, of course, uh, have the last word. <laughs> but um, what I have picked up is that the uh, is when you have started a novice level, there are many steps to problem solving that you have to get to. And the novices, they can really only grab onto the part where you do the equations. Um, there are def there is a lot of literature out there about problem solving frameworks, and. There's many different kinds of frameworks, but they all basically have the same format, which is you gather information about the situation you have at hand, you figure out where you are and where you want to be, like what's the goal state you want to get, get to, then you come up with a plan to get from here, there to here with what you know and what you don't know. It's also important to know what you don't know, and then execute that plan, and then do the math as you do so, and then check your work to make sure you did it right. Um, Many students only know the part where you do the math at the end. 
So it's very important to stress that, first at an introductory level, and then at a, as they get more expert-like, you start sort of backing off a little bit and getting, helping, helping them stand on their own two feet and sort of own their own knowledge, so to speak. Now, the problem with that, of course, and this gets into the other aspect of my learning, is you have students in your class, and if they're physics majors, and you're, you're talk, teaching intro physics, well, that's the course that says you get to be a physics major or not. So if they're interested, they buy in, and they will learn this as they go. But let's say it's algebra-based physics. That class typically, at least speaking for the classes I teach, it's dominated by biology majors and health science majors, people who are pre-physical therapy or pre-medical, -pre pre-dental, pre-everything. And um, this is a class, not the class. So that sort of bleeds into the other aspect of my research, which is something called, the fancy word is epistemology, um, but as far as my research is concerned, it's basically in terms of their attitudes, like what they think physics is, what they expect to learn, that sort of thing. Um, and the way that movie was really nice is that a lot, one big question we have is why is physics important? Why do we need two semesters of this stuff, especially with some of it is stuff we just never need again? And um, that gets back, getting back into the critical problem solving skills, you, if you watch the movie, you see what Mark Watney has to do. He's a botanist. He's not a chemist, an engineer, a physicist, a mathematician, a computer scientist. He's a botanist. Um, but you see him do these things one by one throughout the movie. He has to use skills in those fields just to survive. He has to first use his own skill, botany, to figure out how to grow potatoes in the soil. Um, and do some unpleasant things in the process, <laughs> those of you who know the movie. And, uh, <laughs> but he expands upon that into sort of biochemistry, chemistry angle, where he has to make, he has to figure out how to produce water to make sure the plants get the water they need. Um, he has to learn, know some computer science in order to set up some communications with NASA. Um, he's able to, he has to think about things like where does his energy sources come from, coming from. He has to dig up solar panels, things like that. Um, and know what to do with them. So that's engineering. There's a lot of engineering that goes into this stuff. So basically, that's what the whole crew of six is meant to do in tandem of his crew. He was a guy, he was a man of one. But what helped him survive was not just that, he did, it wasn't just his content knowledge, it was, it was his ability to gain that knowledge by, in this problem solving process. So, um, so that's where I'm coming from. That's why I'm on this panel. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Andrew.